So marketing is a full-time job. If you've got a business and you wanna grow your business, you need to market every day. Now, if you've not got a team around you who can help you market, if you haven't got a marketing department, you know, maybe you're an entrepreneur, you're starting out and you need to do a lot of it yourself, you know that it takes a lot of your time up. And today we're gonna to talk about some tools that you can use that help to free up your time to focus on other areas of your business, other aspects that matter to you and use the tools to help you become more productive in your marketing. Hi, my name's Adam Sykes, founder of Swiftcase, the professional productivity platform. And today we're talking about the coolest marketing tools of 2019. Hi, my name's Adam Sykes, the founder of Swiftcase, the professional productivity platform. And today we're talking about the coolest marketing apps of 2019. So stay tuned and you can see some of the apps that we use here at Swiftcase in order to make our marketing much more productive. And to kick off, we'll talk about the first app, which is HubSpot. Now, if you've done anything with marketing, if you've read anything, you've watched any videos, you've probably come across the term HubSpot. Uh, you may have checked them out. They've got some great tools. It's, not, it's more of a, a, a whole way of marketing. It's not just a single aspect, a single tool. So the big thing that HubSpot's all about and what we're about here at Swiftcase is inbound marketing or content marketing. So if you want to think about the old style of adverts and like the Coca-Cola branding and the big posters out on the wall or even the junk mail that comes through your door, that's direct marketing. And that, that is a way where the company reaches out to potential leads, potential customers and gets in their face and says, look, this is what we've got. Do you want it? Look, come and speak to us. And what content marketing or inbound marketing is about, it's about the actual company providing content that adds value, that provides useful information to the clients that, that the clients or prospective leads will come and want to come and have a look at your company. And then when they look at your business and what you're offering and your, you know, the content you've been putting out, they say, let's have a look at their product. Let's see what else they can do. Hopefully they, they, they learn to trust you because you've, you've explained and you've demonstrated through your, your content, your authority on the aspect of the um, area that you're working in. So hopefully our videos help you to learn about how to be more productive. And our business is about how to use technology, how to leverage technology to become more productive. So you come and look at our content and you realize that, hey, Swiftcase, they know what they're talking about. Let's get in touch with them. We want to make our business more productive. And HubSpot is all about content marketing. It's got a little CRM tool that's a free tool where you can add all your customer details, your prospects. You can manage your email marketing with them. You can put in sign up forms on your website so you can add people to your email newsletter. So it's just a great way of linking a lot of your marketing together, whether that's your email strategy, your content strategy, even your Facebook advertising. HubSpot is a great tool for linking everything together. So check out HubSpot and see what you can do uh, to supercharge your marketing through using their tools. So the second tool I wanna to talk about today in the coolest marketing apps is Buffer. So Buffer is a tool that helps you with your social media. So you may or may not know if you've been using social media that there are some um, sort of best practices and how often you should post on the different platforms. So whether that's Twitter and you need to post more often because things are lost in a feed or whether it's Facebook where maybe you don't need to post so many posts a day, maybe only one or two is a bit more realistic. Otherwise people think you're spamming them, you know, and Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, they've all got their sort of different strategies of how often you need to post, what the length of content is that you need to provide in order to have an impact. And the way Web Buffer fits into this is it allows you to schedule content because if you're sat on Twitter all day, you're not going to be very productive, are you? So if you need to send 15 tweets out a day, spread out at certain times, finding the peak times which are the best for engagement with your, you know, with your tweets, with your content, that you don't want to be doing that all day and what buffer allows you to do is to schedule those 15 tweets at the times that you want them to go out and then you can schedule weeks of content in advance and you can get on with doing something else so buffer is a great way in order to free up your time from actually posting on social media and allows you to put a bit more strategy into your marketing approach because 
you can schedule it in advance, you know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and you can also look at the analytics that they return so you can make better decisions in the future. So that's Buffer, so check out Buffer to schedule your social media posts. Now the third app or um, tool that I want to talk about is LinkedIn. Now. LinkedIn, you may not think of it as a tool, but it's got its own app and I, I'm on the app all the time now. I think it's a great place to do business, especially the business to business world, but not just the business to business world. If your market is consumers, then don't worry, there's still a place for you on LinkedIn. Now, in the past, it may have been that you, you avoided LinkedIn. You thought it was just for networking, uh, for getting jobs or you know career information, but it's actually a great way to interact and as I said, it's a great way for business to business, but you need to follow a few simple rules if you're marketing on LinkedIn. Now, the first one is by all means, try to connect to people, but connect with a reason. So have you actually done business with them? Do they know someone you know? You know, is there a mutual contact that can, you know, you, you say, hi, I know such and such, it'd be nice to get to know you. Or, you know, have you met them in a conference or, or, or something of that nature? Don't just go on spamming people going, please connect, please connect because that's the wrong way and you're just going to annoy people. Now, the second way that you're going to annoy people is by instantly messaging them with a clearly uh, templated vanilla offer that you give to everyone else. So you get this a lot. I get, I get this a lot with website companies. They message me and they say, we do websites, so many dollars. It's always, it's always in dollars, so many dollars a month or so many dollars for a website. And these are our rates and we're, we, you can outsource all your website information, uh, uh, website jobs to us and we'll sort it. And it, it seems to be whoever connects to you, they look like bots. It, and if you're doing that same kind of marketing on LinkedIn, you're going to look like one of these annoying bots. So just try and avoid instantly messaging someone who you've never spoken to before. If you've spoken to someone in a conference and you said, hi, we spoke in this conference and uh, uh, it was great to chat to you, wondered if we can get in touch, that's fine. But don't just spam people. Don't spam people by trying to contact people you, who you've got no connections with. And don't try and just spam people by instantly messaging people and, and putting forward your product offer. That's not the best way to get, get sort of marketing leads out of LinkedIn. Now, they're the don'ts. The do's are to firstly connect with people who will share your interests. So either people who you've dealt with in the past, your current customers, uh, people with mutual con uh, contacts, uh, join groups where it's uh, something in your niche, or so maybe like we're in productivity, we're in some productivity groups. So check out groups and join places where people um, will want to know what you're talking about. And then the next thing is add content, you know, produce articles, add value to LinkedIn. So create articles that people want to read, people want to comment and engage with you and post them up and post them regularly. And then the second way to use LinkedIn, as well as adding content, is to comment on other people's content, share other people's content. And, you know, I've heard lots of people say, you know, you should be con uh, commenting on like, like 90 comments a day on various things. I mean, again, do what you can manage. You know, make the co comments on people's content that's relevant. Don't make spammy comments again. Don't spam, don't spam on LinkedIn. Just make relevant comments. Speak to people, have a conversation, make connections, and you will gain from working on LinkedIn. And at the end of the day, it's focused, it's direct. You can speak to specific people. It's a great way to be productive rather than direct marketing, which is just going out broadcast, shotgun approach. LinkedIn, you can be very focused on who you want to talk to. And as I mentioned before, not forgetting the business to consumer is don't forget these people also have consumers. Just because someone's in business doesn't mean they aren't consumers as well. And maybe they want to speak to you. Maybe they're interested in buying cars or buying watches or something, even though you're currently talking about finance or whatever it is, uh, talking to customers in that sort of area. So just because someone isn't a business to business, um, you don't have a business to business company, it doesn't mean you can't use LinkedIn. Okay, so the next app I want to talk about, about the coolest marketing apps of 2019 is Unbounce. So Unbounce is a system, a service that you can use that has a, lets you build landing pages. So what a landing page is, it's the page that someone, when they come to your website, it's the page they land on. That's why it's called a landing page. 
So what a lot of companies will do is they will put on an advert, whether that's a Facebook ad or Google AdWords or, or whatever it is, it can even be an offline ad, you know, a, a particular print item with a specific URL and that will come to a landing page. And what you can do with landing pages is that you can direct your content specifically to the person who you've uh, marketed to with the advert. So if you've been marketing to financial uh, planners, then your copy on your website won't be your homepage, you'll drop them on. It'll be a page that's designed specifically to talk to financial planners. If you've been dealing with insurance companies and the advert is geared towards insurance companies and how they can use your product or service, well then your landing page that comes from that advert will be related to their industry, to their sector. It will use their language, it will have their pain points, etc. So landing pages are great ways to have specific content designed for a specific audience that's linked up to an advert. And what Unbounce lets you do is it lets you do A-B testing, it lets you experiment with different landing pages. So you can create multiple landing pages with different content and weight them to see how uh, many times they appear. So say you give it a 50-50 weighting, you can try two different variations. 50% of the time your customer that goes to the landing page will see one variation and 50% of the time your customers will see the other variation. And you can create as many of these variations as you like and you can use the analytics that they've got to see how they convert. So ultimately you can create better landing pages through Unbounce. Now, as well as landing pages, they also have some other great features. Uh, two of the ones which I particularly like are the sticky bars and the pop-ups. So pop-ups can be annoying and we've all had it where they pop up on a website when you're trying to read a blog article and you're like, oh, just get off my screen. I don't want to see these pop-ups. But if you actually put some clever pop-up logic in, they can start to become more useful. So you can have intent-based pop-ups. So if someone looks like they're about to leave your website, you can have a pop-up that comes up. You can also put in things like only show the pop-up every three times or every five times or if the customer's been on the page for a minute so it's not instantly coming up, popping up in their face. You can say, well, they've read an article, they've spent a minute on this page, let's pop up and say, do you want to subscribe? They obviously are reading it, they obviously like it. Then a pop-up's not too much of a bad idea. And then the second one, the sticky bar, is kind of a less intrusive pop-up. So you may have seen these for very much used recently for either GDPR or cookie information where it, just a little bar slides in at the very bottom or slides down at the very top, very thin bar. It's effectively like a very narrow pop-up. And they're another great way of helping people to uh, engage with your site, to actually have a call to action to get them to sign up to a newsletter or whatever it is that you're offering. Um, they're just other ways to sort of interact with your customers and Unbounce is a great way to implement those, to A-B test with those different pop-ups, different uh, settings, and you can try to see what gets you the best results. So that's Unbounce, give it a, give it a go. Okay, so next that app is Google Analytics. So as we've just been saying with Unbounce, you wanna know how things are performing and Google Analytics is a great way to understand how your website's performing, where all your leads come from, how long they stay on your page, uh, how many pages they click on. You can even see the journey that they go to, so where they came from right through to how many pages, which pages they went to, how long they spent on the pages. You've got so much information and whatever you can measure, you can improve. So if you can see that a certain landing page is doing great or a certain category of topic is doing great, we can produce more of that content. You can make sure that the calls to action that are converting well are used elsewhere throughout your site. So Google Analytics is a great way to get lots more information to improve your marketing and it saves you having to try and figure out which things are working properly or guess or, or make decisions based on no information that ultimately won't be productive. So Google Analytics, get the information, measure what you want, and then improve and improve those measurements. So that's Google Analytics. Okay, so once you've actually got your list of email addresses from your content marketing, so you've been gathering email addresses, you've got people signed up to your newsletter, you need to actually send them a newsletter. Now, one of the greatest apps for doing this is MailChimp. So MailChimp's got lots of great features. You can build uh, loads of templated emails so they can drop in their name, you can put names into the subject. 
It's got loads of great analytics about how uh, how your emails performed, how it how many times it was opened, who opened it, what links did they click on, and you can also compare to industries that are similar to yours to see how your emails are doing versus their emails. It's got great um, ways to segment your data, so you can send different emails to different groups, or you can even just send a trial email to work out which subjects working the best and then send it to your full list and it handles all the things like making sure you don't appear as spam when you're sending lots of emails it's got um, you know it's got a great builder where you can do create emails through a drag and drop interface so even if you're not the best designer you don't know html and css you can create a great email that looks great it works across all the different email clients you can even use templates that already exist and you can have consistent emails that go out and inform your clients, keep your prospects up to date and hopefully convert more leads, which is what marketing is all about. Okay, so the next app I wanted to talk about is Active Campaign. So if you think of MailChimp as your uh, bulk email where you're sending out newsletters, you're sending out multiple emails to lots of people that want to may have signed up to your newsletter, maybe it's the what's new in Swiftcase 2.5 or maybe it's uh, what you know the top five blog posts of February, you know, something like that, whatever it is, MailChimp's great for doing that. An active campaign is sort of the, the other end of the spectrum. It's so rather than the bulk email, active campaign is great at doing the kind of the one-to-ones and what it allows you to do is it allows you to create a step-by-step -step process that where you can send out different emails at different times. So maybe someone drops into your website and fills out a form, they automatically get an email back from Active Campaign that says thank you for responding to our email. But then, depending on what they do in the sort of coming uh, days or hours, Active Campaign can be set up to use Logic to send out the next email based on their actions. So if they've signed up to your email list and then they've used your free trial of your software, well then Active Campaign can be set up so that the person who uses the free trial gets a different email to the person who hasn't done anything since they've set up their newsletter subscription. And you can also have a time period, so you could have an email that went out on day one, then day five, then day 10, which obviously you can't do with a bulk mailing list because if you're gonna send it out to a thousand people, they didn't all sign up on Monday the 1st and then they get their second email on the, you know, three days later, they'll all be signing up at different times throughout the month. But Active Campaign makes sure that you can see those uh, emails going out at regular intervals from when the sign up started uh, for that particular user. And again, it's got great analytics on how many emails are opened and how things are performing. So Active Campaign is a great way to get to build email drip campaigns where you drip information to your prospects over a long period of time. So that's Active Campaign, go and check it out. And then finally, uh, one last uh, app for the, the coolest marketing apps is Google Drive. Now, it might sound like, what, why is Google Drive great for marketing? Google Drive is great for marketing because it helps you to become organized. If you're shooting video and you've got footage that needs to be uploaded for someone else to edit, you can put it all into a folder structure. It's all in the cloud. Someone else can go and grab it, edit it, put it back up into another folder so it's ready to go on live. You've got your full library of all your assets, all your content. If you need to get hold of a uh, logo or a brand guideline, you can put it all in a central location that everyone can access. So it just helps you to become more productive because you know where things are. You're not hunting for that uh, logo image file. You're not going, you're not, you don't need to worry about where the next video to upload is because it's all in an ordered structure. So you can use Google Drive to share files, to share content, and make sure that everyone's on the same page. And that's what being more productive in your marketing is all about. So hopefully you've enjoyed the coolest marketing apps of 2019. Don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell to get notifications and more videos like this. And if you've got any other cool marketing apps that you've been using this year, then don't forget to drop them in the comments and I'll join you in the conversation down below. Thanks for watching. My name's Adam Sykes, founder of Swiftcase, the professional productivity platform, and we'll see you again next time.